well. In fact, it's going to make up for some of your lost time at the gym. We bring in Liberty Vittert, feature editor of the Harvard Data Science Review, professor at Washington University in St. Louis, also known as Mark and Carol Vittert's favorite uh, child. So a bottle of wine equals how many minutes on the treadmill? Okay, let's like not get ahead of ourselves or too excited here. Um, this comes from a study about a, a thing called Revestrol. And the idea was is if you take Revestrol, it mimics being in the gym. But and Revestrol is like a drug. It's a drug that you can find in red wine, fruit, nuts, that kind of thing. Unfortunately, in order to get any type of health benefit from it that you would get at the gym, you need to drink between 100 and 1,000 bottles of red wine. Well, 1,000 bottles over a year? Again, let's not get too excited. More like a day, although so a thousand I, bottles could in a do day, it, you could do you it. You could do it. Okay. All right. So in, you have to think like, was it the Red Wine Institute that funded this study or something? Something like that. Something like that. Figures. Okay. So light and uh, light and moderate drinking, though, lower risk of heart attack and death in people with heart disease, sort of goes along with what we've always heard, which is a glass of wine at night, especially red wine, might be good for you. Yeah, so let's take it, you know, you're sitting at home and you're a moderate drinker, which means about three bottles of wine a week. And what that actually means is in comparison to never drinkers, teetotalers, you actually have a lower risk of, of any type of death. Um, they're actually 20% more risk. Same thing if someone's a heavy drinker, five bottles of wine uh, per week, you have a 20% increase. So you can sort of think about it two ways. Either if you're a moderate drinker with these three bottles of wine a week, you're at this optimal longevity where up here, you have never drinkers, teetotalers with a 20% increase, and heavy drinkers, and you're at this optimal level. So for those of us, of course, who are up the optimal level all the time, is it only red wine or is it other things? Any type of alcohol. So it has to do with units of alcohol. It's red wine, it's beer, it's spirits, it's any type of alcohol. So it has to do with the what, amount. And we, we've always heard, though, that, and you talk about this at the dinner table, correlation versus causation is that maybe the heavy drinkers are more stressed in their lives and the teetotalers are not, so these people in the middle kind of live in the, the perfect place? Well, I'm glad you pay attention at the dinner table to me sometimes. But yes, the idea is, is that, you know, for example- I pay attention and tell the second bottle of wine. Um, the teetotalers, maybe they're teetotal because they have some other health problem, right? So maybe they're not actually these healthy people, but in general, all the research shows that some moderate level of drinking could actually be healthy. Okay, and there, when you lived in the UK, and this was always, always an issue, uh, Women here, every time you have a glass of wine, think about the risks of breast cancer. Yeah, and they really shouldn't. So let's take a look at the numbers. And I think we have a graphic um, to help us understand this. So if you have 100 women non-drinkers, 11 of them, you'll see them there in red, will get breast cancer regardless of alcohol. Now, if all 100 of these women drink one and a half bottles of wine a week, instead of 11 women getting breast cancer, 13 will. These extra two women you see in blue. But if all 100 of those women drink three bottles of wine per week for their entire lives, instead of 11 women getting breast cancer, 15 women will. And we'll see another graphic with an extra two blue people there. Okay, so the extra two blue people represent... The extra women who will get breast cancer because of drinking. And that would be the, the next graphic. That Meaning okay. that in effect, your risk goes from 11% to 15% for breast cancer, but you're drinking three bottles of wine per week for your entire life, a risk I'm willing to take. And as you said, while those in glass houses shall not cast stones, if you're drinking three bottles of wine a week, maybe you're a little bit stressed or you're eating french fries with that wine. And maybe it's that that's causing the breast cancer and not necessarily the alcohol. So when does the National Sugar Council do the study that says we can eat Snicker bars all day, every day, and live to a thousand. Well, I just ate a Snickers bar right before I came on here, so there you go. soon. And we'll have wine soon. later tonight, so life's fine. So, okay, big point though here is you look through any of these studies, the headlines always tend to be great, but the data underneath devils in the details on this. It's always murky, and you know, Lucky, every year you'll see, you know, one study come out that says alcohol is okay, one study that it's not. I'm not giving medical advice, but I'm drinking tonight. Drinking tonight, all right, and hopefully sort of right there three bottles a week. Liberty, thank you very much. We learned on the playground that you're not supposed to call people names.